Uh, we're going to start over again because there was a problem with the audio. Uh, we're, we're using the, uh, the webcam mic, so the audio may not be as clear. If you are able to dial in and you have audio, you should use that. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Paul Ford. I'm the Vice President of Product Design at the Lighting Quotient, and I'm with uh, Zach Zaharowitz. And we're going to talk about the S530 new linear uh, LED product that's used uh, primarily for libraries, grocery, um, archival data centers. I'll start off by showing you the the um, the cell sheet, which is available on the website right now. It should come up in a second. Here we go. Uh, this product shot on the front showing uh, the, the clear lens. And on the back, we have features and benefits. We have the candle power curve, the lighting facts label, uh, and some of the specifications, which I won't go through right now. I'll go through in a minute as we, as we move forward. Um, just taking a look at the data sheet, you have the, uh, the line drawings and the specifications and the call outs and a thumbnail of the candle power curve. And I'll take you through on the back side for the specifications, each of the segments and um, all the, the features for each one. And this product, we have lengths from uh, two feet through nine feet, and we offer it in two drive currents, 350 milliamp and 700 milliamp. Uh, so you can see there's quite a few choices uh, for lumen output. And this is really just showing the list of lumen output at 3,500 Kelvin, which will be a typical uh, color choice for commercial applications. But you'll notice on the cut sheet there is a link that will give you some more expanded information such as the, the scaled performance table. So this not only shows every uh, length increment and drive current, but it also shows how the light output and efficacy varies by uh, the color temperature uh, and CRI of the LEDs that are chosen. So I won't go through this, but it's just showing that the link is right on the back of the catalog page. We do have three mounting surface mounted to the ceiling, and it mounted, and there's also cable mounted. Um, we also now have simplified all the, so instead of having a special, uh, 120 volt, 277 volt for both non-dimming and dimming, we just have uh, two codes now. There's eight, which is 120 through 277 universal dimming, and M, 120 through 277 with dimming. And also you'll notice there is a link on here as well, which will take you to driver information, which gives you information such as the type of dimming that is used, uh, the remote distances, as well as the minimum starting temperatures. Next, we get into the, the options. And this product is available with a clear lens, for bi-asymmetric, so it's lighting two vertical planes, opposing planes. Um, when you have a, a library with aisles, and the, at the very end there won't be one, there won't be a, a stack to light from one side. You can specify either a, a, a co-extruded half black and half clear lens, so it's really an asymmetric distribution, or a half translucent white and half clear. So it's still a one-way, but it'll, it will provide some uh, glow on the uh, aperture. We also offer a through-wire harness with quick connectors as a, as a way to uh, speed up the installation. The dimming options include, uh, of course, there's non-dimming if you don't need it. There's also uh, TE, which is our code for ELV type dimming. It's a light tech GE driver dims down to about 10% using a standard uh, trailing edge, reverse phase, ELV type dimming control. We also have ZX for zero to 10 analog dimming. Uh, those are available 120 through 277 input. They dim to about cases all the way down to 1%. Um, and the zero to 10 volt controls are standard uh, analog controls. We also have two Lutron options, one for uh, Lutron Echo Bus dimming down to or standard three wired uh, Lutron dimming controls. And we also have two ELDA LED uh, dimming options. One of them is zero to 10, 
which is a dim to dark, um, and then have Dolly, which is also dim to dark. As far as the installation, it's very simple. You mount the mounting plate to the ceiling. It's very similar to our Ovalinear and our 3030 lines. Uh, mounting plate goes to the ceiling. The fixture hinges onto the plate and hinges open so you can access the driver, the supply wiring. Uh, if you order the OK through wire option, you can wire the first fixture and the rest of the fixtures plug into the previous fixture on in the row. Uh, then you just and close. So it's a pretty simple installation. Uh, Zach's going to talk about the, the website, which has a lot of new features um, and where you can find all the information. And if you have any questions either on uh, the website material or any of the preceding slides, there is a Q&A function. So if you want to enter questions, we'll do one of two things. If there's time permitting at the end, we'll try and answer some of those directly. And if not, Paul and I will re uh, prepare a response that we'll email out to all the uh, attendees. The first link you'll see right under the product photo is the data sheet, which would be the standard cut sheet that Paul already illustrated in one of the previous slides. But some of the other things that are available to you are the product fact sheets. That link will take you to a collection of files that include the brochure or the color cell sheet you just saw, that detailed driver information, skilled performance, and the lighting facts label. And in some of these cases, uh, there's a slight redundancy built in. For instance, Paul already mentioned to those skilled performance directly from the cut sheet, but we've also placed them in this basket as another way that people might come across them. Outside of the product fact sheets, you also have the IES files, and those have been organized into a series of zip files based on your color selection. So if you were to pick 3000 Kelvin 80 plus CRI, you're actually getting all the files for the two foot length through the nine foot length. Trying to determine how to organize them, it seemed best to organize them by the color selection and the two drive currents then by fixture length, uh, just because the color selection seems to drive so much of, of what comes later. Uh, the BIM file is one large BIM file. It's a zip file that contains not only a Revit file, uh, but a 2D AutoCAD drawing that captures all those uh, details you see on the standard cut sheet, as well as all the various IES files. And I was going to say finally, but there are actually two more. The installation files will get you the installation sheets that actually ship with the product, but often we receive questions on those from designers ahead of time wanting to better understand how other hangers, the pendant mounts, and the cable mounts work. So you can get the basic information on the fixture as well as the mounting accessories and once again the driver information if you happen to be on this page and realize that's something you want to investigate. So here you see an example cropped of the pendant stem mounting and here are the aircraft cable kits. Uh, the configure it selection for those of you using your rep logins uh, and coming into the configurator you would be able to go through and make specific selections and all view the pricing associated with those selections however uh, you know frequently designers will use this if they want to generate a specific cut sheet enter the project name and in particular just using this notes section uh, you know for someone doing a DD presentation it's very helpful in terms of putting in comments on things that still need to be decided and coordinated. And on the back side, making those selections will also generate the top line number, again, putting in the project name and the type if there is one. I'll turn it back to Paul. Okay, next we're gonna talk about performance and we're gonna show, uh, this is just the, the ITL report. So all, all of our products are tested uh, by a third party independent uh, testing lab. Uh, the LM79 photometric report is shown here, which shows you the uh, candela curves as well as uh, the candle power curves or candle power uh, values at different angles and as well as the efficacy of the, of the fixture itself. In this case, you can see that it is uh, 89.6 lumens per watt. Uh, next, we'll get into the, the LEDs themselves um, have to go through an LM80 testing procedure by the manufacturer themselves. 
Uh, it's a long, it's at least 6,000 hours of testing and they will test several at uh, different case temperatures or uh, temperatures on the LEDs themselves. So they, they'll run uh, some at 55C, some at 85C, and some at 105C. And they'll do them at different drive currents. So since these are mid-power, you'll see 65 milliamp, 150, and 180. Uh, so this is kind of a summary table, but this shows over the 6,000 hours is the minimum. These were actually tested out to about 80, 8,500 hours. Uh, from there, we would send our fixture out, again, in this case to ITL, uh, where the fixture is tested it's in an uh, ISTMT or in situ temperature measurement test. And they will put thermocouples on the LEDs as well as the driver and measure the hottest LEDs. And those temperatures are used to determine uh, the projected lumen maintenance. Since there really is no uh, LED life that we talk about, we usually talk about it as lumen maintenance or the amount of light that uh, decays over time. And in this case, uh, we're running very cool and the results are shown at uh, L90, so 90% 90 light, light output greater than 48,000 hours. And 21 calculator that load off energy stars site we punch in all of the LM80 data up in the top you see in the chart, and then you correlate the actual measured temperature of the LEDs while they're running in our fixture to correlate back to a projected lumen output. And you'll notice that uh, it says greater than 48,000, and that's because there's about 8,000 hours of testing. And if you use TM21 properly, you should not uh, project the light output beyond six times your actual measurement. So if you've only measured uh, 8,000 hours, you can project beyond 48,000. And I'll turn it back over to Zach, talking about some of the features in application. The, uh, the two most likely comparisons of this product from our own families, fluorescent 3030 and F5, those are really identical. One was cataloged in T5, the other in T5HO. And more recently, the baffled stack. Uh, what you see on this slide is really a, a comparison more of the S530 versus those fluorescent options. Obviously, much smaller size, uh, higher efficacy. Um, in terms of, of dimmability and instant on, uh, not a radical difference. Some advantage along with no UV, no mercury, and excellent lumen maintenance. And while it might not seem like much, the no UV, I, I know in the past we had had archival uses of the fluorescent where we had to provide different ways of filtering the lamps. And while that was possible, it's certainly nice to not have that headache any longer with LEDs. Paul mentioned some of the applications we've already seen of this are groceries, uh, data centers, library stacks, and more archival uh, record areas of a variety of aisle widths and heights. So these are just suggestions of the types of facilities, you know, where they're being used. The, the photo that just came up, uh, I wanted to point out, while we mentioned earlier there are three mountings, surf, craft cable, and pendant, there are really four. Uh, those of you who have used any of our aisle lighting products have probably seen a examples of cantilever mounting. So there is a suggestion, a diagram on the cut sheet, but we've found that those typically need to be worked out on a case-by-case -case basis. You see in the photo the a large installation using our baffled stack fixture, but you could easily picture the exact same mounting with this lensed S530 and it would work much the same way. Uh, there are a couple of quick, if I didn't double click, uh, comparisons. This is showing the S530 in a grocery application. And most of the um, national account grocery clients we've had in the past, we've often been looking at seven foot aisle with 12 foot mounting heights. So this is giving you some idea of its performance in that same scenario. And then side by side, how it compares with the T5HO F525 and also with the baffled uh, stack STAQ. 
if you're familiar, familiar with that nomenclature. So in both cases of the LED, we're looking at 700 milliamp as being a comparable selection of the T5HO. And if you look at the very bottom line where it's giving you watts per lineal feet of fixture, 13.3 versus 15.3, which, um, you know, there's some significance there, uh, obviously, but even more three aisles or 80 feet in length. So when you start talking about a savings of two watts per foot over that kind of aisle width, it starts to add up quite quickly over a store. Data centers tend to be a little more variable in conditions, meaning the mounting heights and uh, aisle widths we've been presented with have been all over the place, as are the, uh, the customer's requests for different vertical and horizontal foot candle levels. Nevertheless, this is showing one recent example of, uh, I believe it was a 13-foot ceiling with a 10-foot mounting height, and they had five-foot and six-foot aisle. In this case, uh, the, the comparison in terms of light levels was more like a standard T5 versus the LED solutions at 350 milliamps. And again, gravitating toward that bottom line, you're seeing 6.5 watts per foot versus 7.5 watts per foot for the T5. And for any of uh, those of you who might find these summaries uh, useful in projects you might be considering, uh, there are a series of just six slides, the last pair dealing with libraries, and these could easily be put into a condensed PDF for you. Libraries are probably the most challenging, meaning uh, in terms of mounting height and aisle width, it's like lighting the skinniest canyon. So in, the, in these instances, even with taller ceilings, we're still dealing typically with eight foot mounting heights. This rendering shows an actual facility that had a 10 foot ceiling with seven foot shelving below it and an eight foot mounting height. The, the S530 does have a slightly broader distribution than some of the other choices we've offered in the past, but nevertheless, it still works in the library setting. And for those brainwashed with our 3030 mantra of 30 vertical foot candles at 30 inches, which we did not make up, which the held on to with clutched fists for many, many years. The latest nice thick handbook revised that after all these years to now call for 20 vertical foot candles at 30 inches above the floor. So if I can call your attention just to this line, you're seeing the S530 producing 25 vertical foot candles at that height. So that gives you just a quick overview of some of the scenarios ranging from 12 foot mounting heights down to eight and aisle widths ranging as wide as seven feet in a grove down to three feet typical library. Uh, Paul will wrap up with some, uh, some additional information on the LEDs, and it looks like we'll have some time to also try and demonstrate a sample to the extent the camera will let us do that. Okay. Um, although this doesn't pertain to the S530, I just wanted to bring it up before we uh, stop sharing our, our desktop. We're going to uh, we're going to demo the uh, the product, but while we still have the PowerPoint up, I wanted to mention that as of this week, we have um, changed everything over on the high power LEDs to the Luxion ZES. Uh, includes uh, all of the wall washers, the linear point sources, the cove light. Um, so the benefits are uh, higher efficacy. We're seeing about 15 to 20 percent increase efficacy. Lumen man Excellent. We're using L90, about greater than 36,000 hours. Uh, so we're getting more light output with the same wattage input. And just as a quick example, if you look at the, the S305 cove light, and it also pertains to the, the S101, 102, 301, uh, you can see over the years when we started in, in 2010, uh, the, the efficacy was about 33.6 lumens per watt. And we went to the next generation of uh, of chips and it jumped significantly to 50 lumens per watt. And now we're at 57.5. You can also see the delivered lumens has gone up significantly each time as well as the peak candle power. And all of this is uh, really, the, the wattage has remained the same. This is all based on a 700 milliamp drive current. Um, so that was that wraps up the, the PowerPoint presentation and we will show you the um, S530 sample kit. Um, going across the screen right now are just all the LED products that we have available. And right now I'm going to 
stop sharing the the desktop so you'll be able to see hopefully the video can get a little bit larger for you so the the, the stack uh, kit this is actually the same stack kit that went out to uh, I think it went to, to all of you um, we have redesigned the insert so that you can remove the existing stack light and it's in several layers now so now if you take out the old stack now we have room I don't know if you can see there's the the new s530 and on the layer beneath we have the the stack light for the baffle and so that's your existing sample and then we also have a compartment for the the dimmer uh, and, and the cord. So right now the dimmer is plugged in over there. Uh, just as an example, we'll show you the the S530, and this is with a clear lens. And just to show you what the the co-extruded um, half black, half clear, and co-extruded half translucent and half clear. We're going to turn the lights off from here. I'm going to show this uh, first end on, and it may try to try to adjust the aperture. Um, you can see in the uh, in the background, you can see the two peak candle powers that would be used to light. You turn the way down. So. <laughs> Which two, the two, opposing, just, no. two opposing surfaces. Uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up for you. We can see it on our end, but uh, the camera may not show it as well. You have a peak candle power coming out here and here. There is a holographic film inside, which helps uh, uh, diffuse and provide more uniform appearance of the lens. Um, the, yeah, I think the questions, we have about five or six minutes left. Okay, we have some time left and we'll check the, uh, see if anyone has, has submitted any, any questions through the chat window. If you have any questions, you can uh, open up the chat window and type them in, and we'll we'll be able to answer those for you. As far as uh, the construction of the of the S5 530, it's all extruded aluminum. The um, uh, all the all the hardware is stainless steel. Uh, decorative end plates are ordered separately so that when you do run Continuous row, it will be reveal plate to reveal plate. So it's exactly two foot, three foot, four foot, all the way up to nine feet, end to end, not including the reveal plate. Um, the mentioned before, as far as the, the the mounting plate goes to the ceiling or pendant or cantilever or a cable mount or custom cantilever, as Zach was explaining. Uh, there's screws on the side that that allow you to swing it open. You have full access to the driver. Drivers are all serviceable. Uh, the lenses are also serviceable. Uh, the lens pops off and snaps in flush. So there is no there's no edge of the lens that sticks out beyond the aluminum. So you won't have any light piping out the edge. Uh, the end plates are uh, stamped aluminum. All of the aluminum goes through a, a pre-treatment process at six, six stages of pre-treatment uh, prior to a um, electrostatically applied powder coat that's then baked onto uh, onto the aluminum. So far, no questions. One thing I jotted down, I don't know if it's worth explaining why the lower milling ice were on the mid-power sheet. If you're talking about 350 and 700. Uh, uh, yeah, Zach just brought up a good point on the the mid powers are are actually running at a low 
but each has groups of, in this case, there's 36 LEDs per foot, and they're grouped in six groups of six. So we are still able to use all the drivers that we use on the high power, and we can run them at 350 or 700 milliamp and have similar uh, watts per foot. It's typically around seven to eight watts per foot when you're running at 350 milliamp and around 14, usually between 13 and 15 watts per foot uh, when you're running at 700 milliamp. So that's, yeah, that's a good point. Because the actual individual LEDs are, are running at one sixth of that because there's six, six groups of them on, on the LED board. Yes. Oh, we apologize for any of you that were trying to attend the 10 o'clock uh, webinar this morning, and we will we have rescheduled it to morning at 10 uh, now that we have the video feed. Uh, and Um, Let me get just just the general. If uh, we have one question on the internet pricing, um, and I won't maybe answer that in exactly the same fashion, but budget price wise, allowing $100 per foot is a good starting point. The surface amount, particularly when it's being used in longer length and there are no hangers, is going to end up being less than that. Uh, but until you're at a point where you know if you're dealing with a stem mounted or cable mounted or not, uh, that would be a good starting point. You may find uh, frequently installations being more in the $85 per foot range, depending if it is surface mounted. Uh, but if you want to try out different scenarios, the pricing is live in the configurator that we covered briefly earlier. So you can easily go in there and pick a length, like a six foot or eight foot module surface mount. And start to get a quick sense based on quantity what those numbers are looking like. That is why. <laughs> Weather is beautiful. Weather is beautiful today for a change. It's finally quit snowing. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right. If there are no other uh, questions, we will end the webinar and. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Thank you. If you have any questions, um, you no. can reach Zach or myself now that we've stopped sharing. We had our uh, P Ford at the lighting quotient.com or Zach, D A C H, at the lighting quotient.com. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you.